James Alia joins me he, uh, right here in the studio, which is nice. He's running uh, for California State Assembly in the 71st district. California has a lot of districts. There definitely is, we got 80 of them right now, Cenk. Wow, So, well, uh, James, uh, welcome uh, to Rebel Headquarters. Thank you so much, I appreciate uh, being here. I mean, I'm a big fan of the show, so being on it's kind of a trip right now, so. Oh, that's awesome, Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right, so let's talk about a couple of things. Um, uh, the California Democratic Party came and talked to you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's always going to be an interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what they said, but let's hold on that for a second. Sure. Let's talk about uh, who is the current incumbent uh, in that seat. Current incumbent is a uh, ultra conservative Tea Party Republican named Randy Vopel. Um, he's famous for saying things like climate change is good because it kills America's enemies at the equator, the Muslims. Oh um, my God, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's a direct quote. So. I, I had not heard that one, man. Yeah, wow. yeah, he flies under the radar. Um, he, he said stuff like uh, homeless people are worse than the Viet Cong army that he fought. He, he's a straight up extremist, you know? So uh, I took a look and we were trying to recruit somebody to run against them. And uh, I remember I walked in a room, I was with a group of like 25 people that were looking for someone. And uh, uh, they were all looking at me and I sort of sat down and they're like, you're the person we want to recruit. So I'm like, all right, cool. So ever since then, we've just been running as hard as we can. Where does he get most of his money? Uh, he takes 98.5% of his money from corporate donors. And the 1.5% are from independent contractors that are uh, uh, specifically developers. He takes a lot of money from tobacco, a lot of money from the insurance industry. Um, big oil is another one of his big contributors. Uh, my guess is that uh, that his position on climate change being good and his donors being big oil companies might perhaps be related. I remember I was at Lobby Day and they were speaking about um, offshore drilling and he was literally the only person in favor of offshore drilling in California. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have no doubt his donors have something to do with it. I mean, he's he's a total puppet for the for uh, corporations. And it doesn't sound like he's gonna do Medicare for all. I don't think so. You know, uh, there was a lobby group that went up there to talk to him that actually contacted me after they did and said they wanna volunteer for the campaign and do everything they can to help beat him. And the reason why is because they showed up to talk to him about Medicare for all. And his exact response was, hey, 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 I'm an insurance guy. Insurance industry shouldn't be on the hook to pay for all that stuff. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, they actually wouldn't be on the hook to pay for anything under Medicare <laughs> for all, but he, uh, unsurprising that he does understand the concept. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, so you just had to run. Mm -hmm. uh, when does the California Democratic Party come and talk to you? Uh, and what do they say? They say, hey, great, hey, well, let's yeah. go beat this guy. You know what's funny, Chank, is uh, the Democratic Party really didn't pay much attention to me because the district was so red uh, at the beginning. Uh, the local party was really cool. So a lot of the mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, lo people in the local party was really supportive. The state didn't really pay any attention to me until I was endorsed by our revolution. So when our revolution's national chapter endorsed me, that's when the, the, the California Democratic Party started like, really contacting me and really tried to uh, get involved with the campaign. And I just thought to myself, I'm like, well, I'm a progressive, why are they trying to do this? And so uh, uh, it, it just kind of threw me off like, uh, uh, I don't know if they think they can flip me or whatever, but they're trying to pull me in to establishment type politics. And I just respectfully tell them, you know, we've been running a campaign the way the, the way that we're running it, we're corporate free. We, uh, we believe in single payer healthcare and uh, this is how we're gonna continue to run but they just keep trying to pull you back into it and involve you in the establishment process more and more. Okay, so James, that's super interesting. How, what, what do you mean pull you into the establishment? You know, there was some, uh, there were some people like, uh, there's a program that they have called Red to Blue. And uh, what they do is they'll take candidates that they, they think potentially could flip a Republican district blue and they'll help them out financially and stuff like that. And you know, since we don't take corporate money, I was like, brilliant. I mean, we can, if the party's gonna help us out, that's fantastic. So I met with some people from the party. Um, I won't name any names, but they uh, they basically said they're like, okay, cool, we're gonna help you. We're gonna set you up with some interviews and stuff like that. They go, your first interview is gonna be with Philip Morris, and I'm like, that's tobacco. They go, yeah, your second interview is gonna be with R.J. Reynolds. I'm like, <laughs> that's also tobacco. Like, uh -huh. why are you just hand handing me? Up? And so they said, well, this is how it works. If you can't take corporate money, you fundraise. They'll give it to the party the party will charge their commission and then we'll give it to you. So oh. I told them, I said, you know, in good faith, I can't actively take the money then if I know it's coming from a corporation. I was like, mm. that's the same thing. It sounds like it's legal money laundering. And they said, oh, no, 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 that's not what it is. And I'm like, 
No, I've been a financial consultant for a long time. It sounds like it's legal money laundering. So, uh, you know, like I said, I, I said, you know, if you want to send me walkers, if you want to do a mailer, if you want to do something to help us out, I'm happy with that. But unfortunately, I just don't think I can take any funds if I know it's coming from corporations like that. Right. Well, uh, they do have some uh, walkers as in uh, corporate zombies, but that's not <laughs> what you mean. Of course, you mean volunteers. Uh, that's a really interesting story, yeah. James. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. And thank you for being principled enough to to turn it down. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing yeah. Uh, and wonderful. So, uh, speaking of walkers, uh, how many volunteers you got? How many doors have you guys knocked on? You know, uh, so I'm kind of lucky because uh, uh, a real good friend of mine, a real good friend, a Justice Democrat is actually running, overlapping in the same congressional district, the Markamp and the Jar. Uh -huh. And uh, we're doing a lot of work together. So, uh -huh. um, you know, we, we have, we've been able to attract a ton of volunteers. You know, for the campaign, we have probably 250 registered volunteers. Um, and on any given day, we can get 40 people on a Saturday or Sunday walking. Mm -hmm. uh, we hit just under 20,000 doors in the primary. I personally hit um, a little over 11,000 doors. Uh, and that's exactly why we got through with the numbers we got through. You know, the district didn't have a Democrat get through since 2012. And we not only got through, we held the incumbent to under 45% and we took more, more than a third of the vote. And it was all from a progressive message. So um, first of all, it's a deeply red district in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a progressive message working that well mm -hmm. shows that no, it's the establishment idea that you just run Republican light that also takes money from Philip Morris and Arthur yeah. Reynolds yeah. is the right approach. It's not true. It's never yeah. worked in that district. Yeah. But here's uh, James having success in that district yeah. with an actual populist progressive message, a yeah. one that is uncorrupted. Of course, yeah. And uh, you know that, that was one of the conversations I had. You know, after the primary, there were people who reached out from the party and they said, "Oh, we had no idea that you were going to do that good, but." Um, you know, there's there, there's no way that you could do it without raising the big money and stuff like that. To which we just replied, <laughs> and just laughed it off. We yeah. told them, we said, uh, our message worked. We just need to knock on more doors now. Uh, we took the precincts that the um, independent guy that was running lost, and we've already started canvassing them, and we're already flipping votes. So we're gonna flip the district, and we're not gonna do it with a ton of corporate money. We're doing it on small dollar donations. I can't tell you how thankful I am to see the number 27 every single morning when I wake up and I see our reports, but our $27 donations is what's gonna do it for us. Um, man, Bernie Sanders started a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great, great fire. I know a lot of people are worried about it and I'm glad they're worried. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I wanna show you how you can help uh, uh, in, in this particular case. So elliotforassembly.com is the website. Uh, and then of course, you can donate at elliotforassembly.com slash get dash involved uh, or volunteer. Um, and we'll have those links down below in the description box if you're watching later on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, you also gotta, and by the way, if you don't know how California works, when, when James talks about getting through, uh, we have a, a primary where the top two vote getters go into the general election. And so in a district like that, it is oftentimes two Republicans that go forward. But James' campaign was strong enough that we got a Democrat to go forward. Mm -hmm. So, and whereas Democrats in the past that ran corporate campaigns did not make it, yeah. right? So yeah. we're right about the message. Yeah, yeah. You know, the the one thing that I, the the one thing I can't. I mean, running for office has been one of the biggest honors I've ever had. You know, people actually talk to me about their problems, and uh, I got to tell you one thing that is overly frustrating is when someone tells me you have to be a moderate, and I say, well. You moderates have gotten your butts kicked in that district since I was born. Why on earth would I listen to you? I would listen to you if I surely wanted to fail. So I'm gonna run a progressive message. And running a progressive message, we've done better than any Democrats ever done in the district. Oh, phenomenal. Uh, and it's just, uh, James, out of curiosity, um, uh, what did you do before politics? Uh, before politics, uh, I spent a, a, a long time in wealth management and running nonprofits. Uh, I run an organization right now uh, that's sort of like a, it's an association for independent um, Arab business owners doing collective bargaining pricing with big vendors and stuff like that. And I also run an organization called the Minority Humanitarian Foundation, where we actually work for public policy and particularly with refugees and writing policy for incoming refugees from Iraq, Syria, and stuff like that. Um, so, so that's where I kind of got into the, 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 the mainstream of politics. The only difference was I knew I wasn't like all those people inside the rooms. 
I knew I was always there because I cared about the people. I wasn't there to just get a picture with a refugee. I was there to try and make a difference. And so I said, you know, if I if I want change, it's time to be the change. Um, all right, uh, and by the way, uh, speaking of uh, Bernie, uh, Levi Sanders, uh, his son has yeah. endorsed you. Ro Khanna, yeah. Yeah. Gail McLaughlin, uh, Doug Applegate, yeah. uh, our revolution all yeah. endorsed uh, James. You wanted to show some pictures? Yeah, you know, um, uh, I only have it on my phone. Uh, I just wanted to show everyone my opponent. And uh, uh, in case, oh, is there he him? is, there you yeah. go. That's Randy Vopel right there. He's wearing a, is it a Make America Great Again or Make California Great Again hat? Uh -huh. um, that's him as he normally dresses up. He walks around the streets like that. Um, he has a jacket that he wears that says Assemblyman. Uh -huh. um, and uh, he, he's just, he's an embarrassment to the office. You know, like he's so marginalized. He tried to get a bill passed to make uh, the Vaquero the state horse for California because he just wanted to get any bill that he could pass. And it failed because they found out the Vaquero is not an actual horse. <laughs> it, it, it just means war horse in Spanish. So, so he failed with that. And uh, um, like I said, he's just wasting money. Meanwhile, he has 452,765 people in his district that want rent control. They want affordable housing. We have one out of every three children in our district living in poverty, and he's doing nothing about it. All right, James Elia uh, running a Fascinating, uh, fantastic campaign in California's uh, 71st district for yeah. state assembly. Thank you for joining us. Brother. Thank you so much, Cenk, I appreciate it. All right, no problem.